presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love that, that last song that they sung. It goes right along with today's message, if you could ever imagine that. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, if you have your Bible. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 12. We're going to start reading about verse number 38. Mark, chapter 12. In verse number 38. And when you find the place, if you're able, would you stand all over the house for the reading of God's Word? I'll give you just a few moments to find the place. Mark chapter 12 in verse 38. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord this Amen. morning? Amen. Amen. I tell you, it's an honor and a blessing to get to come together and, and join with God's people. Amen. I look out across the congregation and I see so many smiling faces. Listen, church, we've got the, the best yeah. thing that's ever hit planet Earth. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. We ought to be smiling. We ought to be happy this morning. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, God's Word is just it's so good. It's so good. And as I was reading this week and, and studying up and asking God what He wanted me to share, this is where I was led to, and so I got to share this with you this morning. It may be a little bit different than how we usually do it, but hey, we're just going to follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Mark chapter 12, and verse number 38, the Bible says this, And He said unto them in His doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour or eat up widows' houses, and for a pretense or a show they make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. And Jesus sat over or opposite against the treasury, and beheld or noticed how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much, and there come a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. Now, a farthing was one of the littlest coins that the Roman government made at this point in time. And it was one of the very least amounts of money that they had in circulation. And so she cast in two mites, which made a farthing, and he called unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily, truly, I say to you, that this poor widow has cast more in, or put more in, than all of they which have cast into the treasury. For they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Would you pray with us this morning? Father, we thank you, God, for the spirit we feel in your house. We, we thank you for the praise, Lord God, and the songs uh, this morning, God. And now that it's time to come, Lord, to the time where we open up your word, God, the bread of life. Lord, we pray as we dig in this morning, God, that you would just help us, Lord, and open up our eyes spiritually, God, and our ears spiritually to see and hear what the spirit wants to say to the church this morning. And Lord God, help our hearts to be attentive and focused upon you and nobody else, Lord. God, I ask you to hide us behind the cross. Let nothing but Jesus shine. Lord, anoint us with the Holy Spirit and power. And we promise, Lord, to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 You may be seated if you like. We welcome you to Prospect this morning. Amen. God is good. And we just do things, we may be a little bit different than most people, but we like to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because how many knows this morning that if men tries to lead it, we just mess things up. Right. But if God leads, hallelujah, and that God was able to create this world and hold this world together, I think He's able to lead a church service, Amen. don't you? Amen. I think He's able to lead God's children and, and the world to repentance. Amen. And so uh, we just want to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. But... I heard this quick story that goes along with our text this morning about this man who had called a local church. And when he called this church, there's a secretary answered the phone, Brother Mike. And, and she said, hello. And the man said, I'm looking for the, the big hog or the big hog over the trough. The big hog over the trough. And she's like, sir, 
think you got the wrong number. He said, I don't think so. He said, I need to talk to the big hog over the trough. She said, do you mean the preacher? And he said, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And she said, well, sir, you need to have a little more respect. You need to call him pastor or, or reverend or something. Have a little respect. He said, well, I was just calling to tell him I got about $10,000 I'm wanting to donate to the church. And she said, I think I see that big coming, that big pig coming through the door right now. And so listen, our attitudes change when there's a lot of stuff involved, don't they? Even the world, it's easy to change the world's mind, but we're not safe from it even in the church. Listen, when there's stuff that's on the line, our attitudes change. And, and I want to tell you this story this morning about this woman. And she went and she gave everything that she had. I'm not here to talk to you today about tithing, so don't nobody get up and run out. Don't, don't think that's what, you know, that's a lot of the things in the churches people don't want to talk about. It's money. Listen, I'm, there's a lot more to giving of ourselves than just money. Amen. There's a lot more to giving of ourselves than just yeah. putting money in the offering plate. God don't want just your money. Listen, God pays streets, of, streets out of gold. Yeah. Amen. He don't need your money, but God expects us to give because He Himself is a giver. Yeah. You see, as Christians, we're to be in the image and likeness of God. And so that's why we give because God is a giver. Amen. Has He give you anything this morning? Oh, yeah. Amen. He give me another day of life today. He give me breath in my lungs that I can come and lift up the name of the Lord. He give us uh, the ability today to lift up our holy hands and, and worship God. You see, the devil don't like you uh, using your body as a weapon. When you stand up and you clap your hands, listen, you're making the devil nervous because you are fighting a warfare right there. God give you the ability to stand and clap your hands. He's given you the ability to lift up your hands and praise God. He's given you the ability to open up your mouth and worship Jesus. And when you do that, you are an instrument of warfare against the devil. Amen. You're letting him know. Devil, you can throw anything you want to me today. Hallelujah. But I'm still going to lift up my holy hands toward heaven because I know who my Father is. Amen. I know he's able to deliver me out of your hands. Man, As I was reading this, this this week, and the Bible, it talks about in verse number 38, it said, And he said unto them in his doctrine, this is Jesus talking, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing, and they love salutations or greetings in the marketplaces. Yeah. And I got to looking at all this, and, and we know by history that the, the Jewish teachers of the law and the Pharisees and all of these different men, they were religious leaders. Let me just break it down for us folks today. They were church leaders. Uh -huh. They were church leaders is what they were. And, and these folks, they loved Sister Sandra. They loved to take these long robes. Everybody around had colored robes. But they wanted to wear the white, fine linen. And then they wanted to put tassels, long tassels on their robes. And it was supposed to be over 600 tassels on their robes for every commandment that God had given them. And listen, they got to where they would put these long tassels on. And then they would make this thing. It was like a box. It was supposed to be a small box that, that they would put on their head. But people and men, they got to get in this, this situation and they started building big boxes. And they would walk around, they looked like an underground coal miner with that big thing sticking off of their head. I'm talking about men began to corrupt what God had told them to do. Yeah. And listen, when man gets in the, in the plans of God, we begin to corrupt it and we begin to make a downfall of what God had intended to do. Listen, and these folks, they wanted to dress up and they wanted to, to look the part. They wanted to, to look dignified. Oh, let me tell you something. You cannot be dignified and worship God Amen. at the same time. People, we need to quit worrying about being dignified and we just need to worship God. Hallelujah, because if we worry about the opinions of others, it'll send us straight to hell. Because when you worry about what your neighbor thinks about you, you know what happens? You get your focus off of what does God think about you? Amen. That's what happens. And we don't need to worry about what our friends think, or our neighbors think. We need to worry about what does God think. Because He is the reason why we're here. If you're here for any other reason today other than to get in the presence of God, then we need to examine ourselves. The Apostle Paul said, examine yourself daily to make sure you are still in the faith. 
Amen. I didn't come to be seen today or to be heard, but I come to get in the presence of God. Amen. And to share with you what the Lord wanted me to share. These folks, it said, beware of the scribes that love to go in long clothing and they love greetings in the marketplaces. Not only did they start dressing uh, like they wanted to and, and making a show, they were bright. When they, went, when they walked into the room, they made an entrance. They wanted to make sure that everybody in the temple, everybody in the church knew that they were there. They wanted to make sure that they had the, the best seat in the house. Yeah. They would come up and they would sit at the front to where the scrolls of the Torah was. And why did they do that? So they could learn no. So that they were in front of everybody else. That they were in front of everybody else. Now all eyes were upon them. Listen to me today. Don't worry about whose eyes are upon you. You worry about what God's eyes. The Bible said the Lord always looking to and fro in the earth. Looking for somebody to show himself strong to. But when God looks down to show himself strong to you. Does he find your, your worry or your, your. Let me think of the word I need to put right here. Does he find. That you are worried about what everybody else is seeing or what God is seeing. What does God see? Because if God looks down and He sees you worrying about everybody else's opinions, if God looks down and sees you worried about everything else on, and worried about you, uh, He can't pour out His blessing on you. You're tying God's hands behind His back. But if God looks down and He finds a person and He finds some people that love God and are not worried about self, you see, the Apostle Paul said, I have to die daily. I have to crucify my flesh daily. Hallelujah, I had to get rid of this fleshly man so I can live in the Spirit. Amen. And see, Paul said, I have to die daily. Because yeah. he wasn't worried about self. He was worried about God. And that's where God's house, God's people need to get back to. Quit worrying about ourselves. Amen. Jesus in this scripture, this passage of scripture that we're about to read, we're going to learn some do's and don'ts from Jesus. How many knows Jesus was the greatest preacher that ever hit planet earth? Amen. He shook some people up. All them, them uh, religious leaders or church leaders of the, his day, listen, they were so shook up by his teaching. Every time he would open his mouth, they would say, who is this man? Amen. Who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? Who is this man that talks with such authority? Where did he get this authority from? I tell you where. Straight from heaven. From the Father. Amen. He come down. He said, don't you know I'm about my Father's business? Church, it's time we get down to be about the Father's business. And not about our business. Not about self-righteousness. But about God's righteousness. He said, be you holy for I am holy, saith the Lord. Not to look holy, but to be holy. To live of holy, to walk this road of holiness and righteousness and, and to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And, oh, listen now, he said, beware of the scribes, the religious leaders, which love to go in long clothing and they love greetings in the marketplaces. They want to be seen everywhere they go. This is some of the don'ts from Jesus, first of all. Beware of them who like to dress up and play a role and, and try to look better than everybody else. And beware of those that when they go out in the marketplaces and in the streets and in the house of God and everywhere else, beware of those who want to be seen. Listen, if we are true to the Word of God, then it would be, Lord, hide us and let nothing but Jesus shine. That's what God wants. He said, you are my children. You are my image in the earth. We are the image bearers of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible said that before they were called Christians at Antioch, they were called in the way. People in Bible study, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. The Bible said that they was in the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So they were in the way. They were in Jesus. And, and, and so then, after they were called in the way, they come up with this name at Antioch that they were going to start calling themselves Christians. What does the name Christian mean? Have you ever stopped and really thought about this? It don't mean to promote self, but it means to promote Christ. 
It means that if I call my name Christian, I put Christ's name on the mind. Therefore, I'm not to be about myself, but I'm about to be about my Father's business. I'm about to be about Jesus and, and what Jesus done. I'm to line my life up with the Word of God, not the other way around. You see, a lot of people want to line the Word up with their life and what makes them feel good and what makes them uh, smile. But listen to me now. God said, you don't change my Word. Word, not one jot, not one tittle. If you add one word or take away a word, hallelujah, God said your part will be took out of the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Out of the tree of life. Let me move on down here. That's this first one. Which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues. You see, when they would come in the house of God, and I'm so glad we don't have this problem here. I love you all, by the way. I'm not preaching against nobody this morning. I'm just telling you what the Word said. But when they would get to the temple of God, if all the rich people that had money, all the dignitaries, all the, the big time leaders, and all the people that had nice clothes on, when they would come in the house of God, you know what they would do? They would say, come on. Come with me. You're going to sit up front so everybody can see you're at our church. You're at our temple. You're at our place of worship. Come on, I'm going to put you up on the stage sitting behind the, the pulpit. Come on, I'm going to put you up here on a pedestal. Children of God, we're not to lift up man. We're to lift up Jesus. That's the only one. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men now unto me. You want to see the house of God full? Start lifting up Jesus. You know what a lot of people are saying? I've told you this before. A lot of people say, come hear our, our pastor. Come hear our praise team. Come see our beautiful sanctuary. Come here, see our drama team. and Come do this. No. Come see Jesus. Amen. Come hear Jesus. Come feel Jesus. Come experience Jesus. Because listen, we don't just hear, feel, and see, but we experience. Experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus said, Hallelujah, it's important that I go away, that I can send the comforter. Amen. I'm glad we don't go to a dead church. I'm glad we, hallelujah, that we can feel God. Not only see people say, How do you know He's real? You ain't never seen Him. Well, first of all, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. I may not have ever laid eyes on him, but I feel him, I feel him, I feel him, I feel him. Ever since I woke up this morning, I've been feeling him all day long. I know he's real. Hallelujah. He tugs on my heart all the time. And when I try to turn left, God said, no, boy, turn right. And I say, thank you, Lord, because I was about to go the wrong way. Thank you, Lord. I was about to go down a detour, and I didn't need to go that route. You see, God, not only does He keep us straight, not only does He save us, but He keeps us on the right road. He said, He that saves you is also able to keep you. Amen. And seal you until the day of redemption. And the Bible said, In the chief seats in the synagogues, in the uppermost rooms at feasts they love, when people would come in that had money or, or was dignified, they were dignitaries. They would love to put them up on the pedestal somewhere and make them a show. Everybody look at who come to our church today. Listen, if we're worried about people that's coming to church, and I want everybody to come to church. Don't get me wrong here this morning. But if we worried about a mayor or governor or somebody coming to our church, we don't have room for Jesus coming in because we're lifting up something else. Amen. Listen, I don't want to be a part of a church that lifts up no man. I want to be a part of a church that lifts up Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Paul said, I'm determined in the book of Corinthians. He said, I'm determined not to know anything else among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I told the church Wednesday night at Bible study, he said, I don't want you to draw my mama. I just want Jesus. I'm not worried about everything I'm not worried about a ball game. I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because you know what happened? When I got in the presence of Jesus, He saved my soul. Amen. Oh, He took my blinded eyes and He opened them. Amen. He set me free. 
and who the Son sets free is truly free indeed. I'm here to tell you Paul didn't start out. He didn't start out easy. He started out rough. You see, because when Jesus showed up, Paul was on his way to go beat the Christians and go arrest them. And so what happened? Jesus had to drive him to his knees. And I want to tell you something. Before we get saved, before we call on God, 90% of the time, this is where we'll find ourselves. On our knees before God. And the little saying that we have for warriors of hope is the battle isn't over when God's children hits their knees. It's only just begun. Yeah. Amen. You know what? The devil thought he had you when he saw your head hanging low until you said, Amen. Yeah. And then he said, Oh no. Oh no. They're in warfare battle. They're in warfare mode today. Uh-huh. Thank you, Lord. Listen, the Bible said these people, they love to just make show. Make a show of people and themselves and, and they light their names and lights and, and I love that Christian song I heard it the other day. It's an old song. But it said, I don't need my name in lights. I'm famous in my father's eyes. Can I tell you something in here this morning? Every one of you are famous in your father's eyes. Oh, I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've gone. You're famous in your father's eyes. He loves you. The Bible said... You are the apple of my eye. Oh, hallelujah. God knows the very hairs on your head. And for some, it's easier than others. But God knows the very hairs on your head. God loves you so much. I like to tell the church, if you had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it or a wallet. Your picture would be in it. God cares for you. He said your name is written on the palm of my hand. That's how much God loves you. And the Bible said that these folks, they were just worried about lifting up men. They were worried about putting on a show, having the biggest congregation, having the biggest temple, having the biggest church, having the prettiest pews and the carpet, and having the chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. Listen, when we're worried about temporal things like that, the Bible said one day all of this is going to pass away. One day when Jesus shows up, the Bible said all these things, all these things will be done. But there's one thing that remains forever, and that's Jesus Christ and His Word. And the Bible said when Jesus showed up, all them ones that's worried about having the biggest this and the biggest that, you know what they're going to be doing on that day? They're going to fall down on their knees once again and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Because Philippians 2 says every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feast which devour or eat up widows' houses, and for a pretense, that means a show, for a show they make long prayers, and these shall receive greater damnation. So it goes on. Not only do they like to show off, not only do they like to be around people who are are self-righteous and high esteem, but also they like to go and devour widows and widows' houses. Listen, in that day and time, and still today, it's still bad for uh, to be a widow. But in this day and time, widows had nobody. They had nobody. And God had set it up where the temple and the priest, where their, their tithe money and their offerings were that it would support and it would help the widow and the orphan. It would help the people who were hungry. But you know what? They had kind of turned it around. And the priests were getting all the money. The religious leaders were getting all the money because they can't have somebody coming in their church looking better than them. They can't have somebody coming in their church oh, that that smells better than them. So they got to get the new cologne that just come out. Come on, somebody. This is what happens when men get into God's business. They corrupt the things of God. God has set it up to where the the widows and the orphans and the hungry and the poor, where they would be blessed by the offering. But they had been turned around. That's why when Jesus Christ came to this earth, He shook them to the core because He was drawing all their followers and they were coming to Him. He was the biggest magnet that the world had ever seen. They were drawn to Jesus. Why? Because He showed the love of the Father. Amen. He didn't. He wasn't complacent. But he showed the love of Jesus. 
And he told us, if you'll show the love by this, will all men know that you are my disciples. We're not just to love the dignified. We're not just to love the high and mighty. We're to love the ones who come in here. Hallelujah. That don't look like you. They don't smell like you. They may have green hair and a bunch of earrings and nose rings and tattoos from head to toe. But my God, Jesus died for them just like he died for you. Hallelujah. He loves them just like he loves you. They may not smell good. They may look shabby. But let me tell you what, Jesus Christ, you just give them him and you watch the turn around. God will turn them around. Amen. We men don't do it. We mess things up. You just give them Jesus and watch the change. Because when you get the real Jesus, oh, hallelujah, I said when you get the real Jesus, you cannot stay the same. Hallelujah. Once you get Jesus, there'll be a turnaround. Saul went from a terrorist. He even changed his name. God said you're going to be called Paul now. You used to be Saul. I love the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that says any man that is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What is that saying, Brother Chad? I'm glad you asked. It says this, that when we get saved, when we have an encounter with Jesus, we're not who we used to be Amen. anymore. Amen. You see, we're worried about, I don't know how, how am I going to make it? I can, I'm not perfect. I'm going to fall. But let me tell you this. God is the one who changes you. Amen. Amen. God is the one who helps you. Uh, the devil wants you to worry. And he wants you to fear. But God said this turned over to me, honey. And I'm going to be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I'll go with you all the way. Even to the very end. Amen. And then he said on that day. Then I'm going to come. I've been working on a place for you. Did you know that John's gospel said? Jesus writing Jesus' words, excuse me. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Does anybody want to go on that trip with oh, Jesus? Yeah. Amen. Amen. When he comes back and he says, son, daughter, come on home. I've got your mansion built. I've got your place built. You're going to come and sit down at the table, Amen. brother Steve. We're going to sit down at that table with Jesus. And we'll take communion here after service. But on that day, on that day, we'll sit down with the one whose body was broken. On that day, we'll sit down with the one whose blood was poured out. We're going to sit down at a physical table. We're going to pull up the chairs. You see, God has already sent you the invitation. You, uh, all we've got to do is say, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming. And the devil ain't going to stop me. Hallelujah. We've got any Christians that's got their mind made up this morning that no matter what the devil throws at you, uh, no matter how much hell we go through this week, uh, the devil ain't going to stop us from getting to Jesus. Amen. We're on our way to heaven. We have been bought and paid for with a price. Uh, we're not giving in to the devil's games or his schemes or his devices. Because Jesus has already told us. He's already woke us up. And he told us. You're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Let me move on down. Which devour widows' houses. And for a show they make long prayers. These shall receive a greater damnation. So they devour widows' houses. You know the godly widow. They probably offered the, the priest and the, the scribes and them to come and sit down and have lunch at their house. And before you know it, what happened? They ended up owning the house. And then it was their rose. They took everything from these widows. And then it says they devour widows' houses. And for a show, they make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. Now let me tell you something real quick, church. It's not bad to, have to pray a long prayer. Don't misunderstand the gospel. 
It's okay to pray a long prayer. There's sometimes you got so much you want to pray about, it may go on and on and on. What God's talking about here, He's talking about people that want to get up in front of the assembly and they want to say all these King James Version words and, and they want to just keep on and, and act like they know what they're talking about and oh, act like they're all holier than thou yeah. and act like they're just the big and mighty. That's what God's talking about. Somebody putting on a show using the name of God. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Uh, but I'm telling you, if you're sincere in your prayer, God don't care if it's five hours, ten hours, or if it's just 30 minutes, uh, or if it's just five minutes, or if it's just two minutes, as long as you talk to God. Yeah. Amen. You're sincere. The Bible said his ear is not dealt to hear, but he will hear. Now let me move down. And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and he beheld how the people, they would cast their money in the treasury. And many that were rich, they cast in much. And there come a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. So the Bible said that Jesus, after he went in the temple, now this is the last teaching of Jesus publicly before he went to the cross. And so you can say he might have saved the best for last. Listen, this is an amazing story. And I thought I knew it. I've been hearing it since Sunday school, Brother Bill. I thought I knew everything about this story. I said, we're just going to get up there and read it. And God will help us get through it and be good. But God's just been showing me thing after thing after thing. He He's showing me that I don't know it. I don't know it. How many know is you can read God's Word today and think you know it? But you can read it tomorrow and you'll be like, God, did you really just, did you have something? Because... <laughs> That wasn't there yesterday. I didn't get that yesterday. God's Word is alive and powerful. Amen. And it is today what you need it to be today. Amen. And God give you the revelation today. Thank you, my brother. God will give you the revelation of His Word today that you need today. And tomorrow, one verse may mean something totally different to you. But the Bible said... Hallelujah, the Bible said that Jesus was in the temple and He goes and He sits opposite of the treasury. Now, back in Jesus' day, well, the tithing plates are gone. In Jesus' day, they didn't take around tithing plates or offering plates. But you see, in the temple, there was a long box outside the place of worship. And when they would step outside of where they worshiped God at, there was this long box, and they had 13-looking horns that would come out of this box. And that's what you put your money in in the temple to pay the treasury. And they didn't have paper money, y'all. Thirteen horns is what they look like. They're big at the top and they skinny as they come down at the bottom. And when they would come, they had coins. They would drop these coins. Oh, and the rich and the dignified, you know what they would do? They'd drop them one by one. They'd have a whole handful. Making noise. Throwing them harder. Oh, you hear every coin going in. They want everybody to see how many dollars they put in an offering plate. They want everybody to see what they're doing. But let me tell you what God said, if you do like that, you have your reward. God's not looking for somebody to be a men pleaser. God's not looking for somebody to try to lift up themselves. But then the Bible said that Jesus was observing. And the rich men would come through and they kept throwing in money after money. Oh, there's a $100 coin. There's a, a $200 coin. Listen to me. And God said, look at them rich people. Out of the abundance. Out of their abundance. They, that means that was what was left over. You see, God don't want you leftovers. A lot of times that's what God gets. And it's sad. And I told you it's wasn't about money. It's not. Because God not only gets our leftovers with money, but He gets our leftovers with our time. God, I got all kinds of stuff to do today. I got to work and I got to do this and I got to run here and I got to run there. And before you know it, you give God five minutes right before you go to bed at night and say, Oh Lord, watch us in our sleep and let us wake up in the morning. Amen. Yeah. And that's all the time that God gets. Our praise. God gets a lot of leftovers from our praise. We go all week bragging on our kids, our grandkids, telling everybody how good they are. And then when we get to the house of God, we ain't told nobody all week long how good God is, but we get to the house of God, and we get a little bit excited. We slip up a hand, and then it goes down. God gets the leftovers. You say, Brother Chad, you don't know what I've been through this week. 
I want to tell you something. If you've been through something and you're standing here today, you ought to lift both hands up. Amen. You ought to show the devil. You ought to let the devil know. Uh, oh, you can throw that at me all you want to do. Uh, I'm still going to praise him. I'm still. Because I promise you, if you be faithful over a few things, God will make you ruler over me. Right. Amen. If you'll show God. You said, Brother Ted, you ain't seen things I had to fight this week. I had to fight devil after devil after devil. They come against my home. They come against my child. They come against my circumstances. They come against my family. Praise God, you're still here. Your family's still here. And God said, you and your house will be saved. You and your house will be took care of. He said that no plague shall come now thy dwelling. And he said when the enemy comes in one way, he's going to flee seven ways. That's right. You need to stand up and praise God. If you've been through something, I promise you, if you'll lift up that hand, God will see it, and He will. That's what I'm talking about. His eyes are looking. This morning, God's looking at prospect. And He's looking at somebody, this widow woman come along. All these rich people were throwing in hundreds of dollars. This widow woman, she comes in. And all she had was a half a penny and another half a penny. It equaled a farthing. And so she throws it in. A little clank there and Jesus said, did y'all see that? The scribes and the Pharisees, they didn't even take notice of it because they're over there patting the rich people on the back. I was saying, good job. We'll take all your money that you got. And this little widow woman comes along and drops that money in there. Nobody around them notices it, but Jesus does. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, Jesus notices everything. Everything that you do. Whether it's cleaning the toilets whether it's vacuuming at the church or whether it's feeding somebody that's hungry, you say nobody else knows about it. Nobody needs to know about it. God knows about it, and you're setting up your treasures in heaven. Amen. The Bible says set your treasures in heaven. Set your mind on things above, not on things in this earth. Hallelujah. God said, you see that? That little widow woman that dropped that farthing in there, dropped them two mites in there, she gives more than everybody here. And you see, God don't want leftovers. Our time, Ephesians 5, 16, the Bible says, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. So be not as unwise, but be as wise, understanding what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? Well, Paul put it like this. He said, in all things, in all things, give thanks. For this is the will of Christ Jesus concerning you. So what's the will of God? That we be thankful everywhere we are. It's that in all things. Not for all things. You say, Brother Chad, I'm in a mess right now. God said thank Him and He's going to bring you out of it. He didn't bring you to it to leave you there. But if He brings you to it, He's going to bring you through it. Amen. The children of, the, of the Israel, the three Hebrew boys, they got through in that fiery furnace, but God didn't deliver them out of it. He walked through them with it. Amen. He walked with them through it. Amen. So sometimes we're going to go through these things. We're going to go through the fire furnace. We're going to go through the flood. We're going to go through uh, the lion's den. We're going to go through the prison. But God said, if you hold on to my hand and you trust me and you don't just uh, give me your leftovers, he said, I'm going to take you from the prison to the palace. Uh, hallelujah. I'm going to take you out of the fire furnace and give you a promotion to the king's palace. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, the Bible said. There come a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing, and he called unto him his disciples and said, Truly, I say unto you, this poor widow has cast more in than all of they which have cast into the treasury. For all of they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all of her living. The Bible said this is all this woman had. You say, well, that was dumb. That was dumb, you say. Why was she not planning ahead? Why was she not looking at her future? Oh, she was. You say, why? She didn't have no money to buy food, and she didn't have no way to pay her rent, and she couldn't even watch Netflix, for God's sakes. Listen, she was thinking ahead. She understood that it's all God's to begin with. Everything. The Bible said 
though heavens and the earth and the world and all things that are therein is the Lord's. Hallelujah. The Lord, the earth is His and the fullness thereof. Oh, hallelujah. Everything belongs to God. Everything that we have, you say, well, I bought and paid for that. Well, who give you the job to be able to buy and pay for it? He said, well, I'll work for that. Who give you the ability to lift up your hands and to move your feet to get to that job? Who give you the car to get there and the gas money? Who give you the breath in your body? Hallelujah. Listen, everything that we have is God's. Amen, brother. And so this woman understood this money was God's anyways. And she was trusting God to give all that she had. Amen. She trusted God to give all that she had. And this reminds me of a story that i got to stop and tell you. And then we're going to be done. You ever heard the story of Shouting John? Anybody in here ever heard Shouting John before? The story of Shouting John says that Shouting John joined a dead church. He joined this church and he come in and they offered up anybody wanted to join the church could. So Shouting John said, I'm going to join you. And when he joined the church, you know what he done? He did a little dance. He shouted out, praise God. He lifted up his hands. And you know what happened? The deacons went running and they set him down. And when they set him down, he hopped back up again. He threw up his hands and they pushed his hands down. And when they pushed his hands, they his feet went to moving like this. And they said, man, does he not understand? We don't shout like this at our church. Does he not understand? We don't praise like this at our church. We don't dance like this at our church. We don't speak in tongues like this in our church. And jumping John, shouting John went home. And they said, Brother Deacons, we got to call a meeting. And so they called a meeting. And they said, Does he not understand? We got dignified people in our church. We don't do that here. Brothers, we got to go to Shouting John's house. We're going to go pay him a visit. And so they did. They got in their nice Cadillac cars. And they got in all their nice automobiles. And they drove out to Shouting John's house out in the country. And they come across this field and they pull up and they're shouting John, an 86-year-old man, feeble body, out behind an old mule plowing a garden. I'm telling you. And they got there and shouting John seen them coming across the hill. And when they got out, shouting John said, whoa, mule. He said, brother Deacons, welcome. Before you say anything, I know why you're here. He said, you come here today to tell me that I can't shout like that in your church no more. He said, you come here today to tell me that I couldn't dance in your church like that no more. You come here today to tell me that I couldn't speak in tongues like that in your church anymore. He said, but listen to me. Did you see all that land out there that you just drove up on? Do you see all them hills and all the fences around? He said, God, give me all that land. Hallelujah, he give me every bit of it. He said, now I want you to look at my kids over here. All of them are doing so good. He said, not once, hallelujah, not once have I ever been down to the courthouse with them. Not once have I ever been to the graveyard with them. Oh, Brother Deacons, you may not want me to shout in your church like that, but hold my mule because I'm about to shout right now. I'm going to praise right now. I'm going to dance right now. Hallelujah. If you want me to dignify, you got the wrong man because I'm going to praise my God till the day I die. He said, God, give me all of these things. He said, look at me, I'm 86 year old. And God come into the hospital room and he touched me. And he healed my body. I'm 86 year old and I can still get out here and plow this mule. I'm 86 year old and I can still do things with my family. He said, I'm doing good. And that's all because of what God has done for me. So if you don't want me to shout, if you don't want me to dance, then I'm going to run up and down this field and in this garden. You hold my mule and I'm going to praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to shout like shout and join. I want to praise like shouting John. Would you just give the Lord a shout this morning? Give the Lord a hand of praise. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. 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 Lord
don't know what you came to do, but I come to praise the Lord. I said, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. We're going to praise Him in the morning time. Ooh, I can't even get it out, brother. <laughs> We're going to praise Him in the morning time. We're going to praise Him at noon. We're going to praise Him at night. But we're going to praise the Lord. Yes. Joshua said it like this. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to walk in His statutes. That poor widow woman might have been poor on this earth. But let me tell you something. When she gets over there. When she gets over there, she's got a mansion on the hill. When she gets over there, all those treasures, hallelujah, are waiting for her. Might be poor on this earth, but let me tell you something. James said, what is this life but a vapor? Oh, 2 Corinthians talks about all the, the weightier persecutions, all the weightier things that we go through in this life. He said, but it far. The glory that is to come far outweighs it all. I'm telling you, church, we may not have much here. Oh, but we got something over there. If we just hold on, if we just trust God, if we just have faith in Him, and one day it's going to be worth it. Amen. So worth it. Hallelujah. One last story I'll tell you real quick before we close. There was a song we just had Father's Day couple weeks ago and there was a son who always wanted to give his father something special and so the first time he got him a, a Johnny Cash the whole whole CD collection of Johnny Cash and the next Father's Day he got him one of them hang gliders where you can run off and jump off the side of a mountain like a crazy man <laughs> I don't know if anybody here's ever done that before but that's crazy God give you come and see us use it Hey man, I ain't jumping off of no mountain with no little wing thing. My goodness gracious. Common sense is out the window nowadays. But they give him one of them things, a hang glider. In the next year, he said, I'm going to top it. And he, he, you know what he did? He got him a little bird, a talking bird. And this talking bird could stand on one leg and sing the Yellow Rose of Texas. Oh, it was the best bird in all the land. And so he called his daddy after Father's Day. He said, Daddy, how'd you like that bird? His daddy said, it was delicious, son. <laughs> I want to tell you something. <laughs> Hallelujah. We try to outdo somebody. He was trying to outdo every year, trying to outdo his presence to his father. I got to tell you today, don't try to outdo somebody else. That's not why we're here. We're not here to praise more than you and, and shout more than you and jump more than you. But we're in this thing together. Amen. We're giving our all to God. Amen. If you feel like you can't lift up a hand, let's make it go. Come on. Come on. If you need me to, I'll come over there and lift it up for you. The Bible said that Aaron and Miriam had to lift up Moses' hands. One day they was out in battle. Oh, and his arms was tired. And they went to him and said, Moses, here, we're going to hold your arms up. And the Bible said that while they held his arms up, they won the battle. When his arms got tired and come down, they started losing the battle. What are you saying, Brother Chad? I'm saying as long as you keep your hands going up to God, as long as you keep praising the Lord, you're going to win this battle. And the Bible said those that endure to the end the same will be saved so hallelujah I ask you this morning just keep your hands up keep your focus on God keep praising Him keep loving Him hallelujah and just give Him what He deserves you see God God give His Son He didn't have to and God not only give His Son but Jesus didn't have to die but He chose to you see it cost Him everything and so personally, I think that 10% should go out the window. I think we should give God whatever we can give Him. Amen. Amen. That's what I believe. Just give God whatever you can give Him. Because God give us His all. Yeah. We're to give what we can. Mm -hmm. Not just money. Time. Praise. Worship. Reverence. Yeah. So many things to give God. Yeah. So today I ask you. Praise the Lord. If there's someone here this morning. Amen. You say, I don't know, Brother Chad. I, I, I don't really know how to praise God. I don't really, I don't know. Let me ask you something. Has he woke you up this morning? Yes. Did he put clothes on your back and shoes on your feet? 
All you got to do is say, thank God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And you just acknowledge that God done it for you, and that's going to make him smile. Oh, you know, Jabez said, Lord, bless us indeed. Enlarge our coast. Have your hand upon us. Deliver us from evil and help us to cause no pain. In one place he said, Lord, let your, your face shine down upon us. I want to tell you something. As long as we're praising God, his face is shining upon you. Oh, I can preach another sermon right there, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I know we got communion to do this morning. But if there's somebody here this morning, you need prayer. You need prayer. You need to come and thank God. Or you just want to thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you. My wife's telling me I got something on my face. She ain't going to let me sit up here and look crazy. Amen. If you got something this morning, come. Hallelujah.